Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We have uh, Danal in the house today. Hi, how are you, Danal? Hello, Ben. How are you? Very good. Okay, just like every other week, we are bringing to you live about questions we get asked each and every week on property investment, property development, and whatnot, anything to do with property. So uh, the intention of this program is to add value to you and answer your questions so that you can clarify your doubts, get answers to all your questions on property investments. Daniel, go for it. What have Hi. you got today? I've got a number of questions, part of which, a good part of which were from the same customer that we are in discussion with about some property purchasing or investment. Yeah. Firstly, his first question he asked earlier in the week was, what exactly does buying off the plan mean? Yeah, buying off the plan is, uh, yeah, you can get different interpretations on this. Buying off the plan is if it's an apartment, you're buying before the completion. Uh, an apartment project might take one year, two years, or three years, uh, but you have the ability to buy off the plan prior to completion. So where you put an initial deposit and a 10% deposit, and then rest is on completion. If it's a house and land project, you can again buy off the plan, meaning before the land gets titled, it can be three months, six months, one year, or one and a half years away, you can put a deposit to the land and the house typically 5% and then lock everything in, lock the prices in, and that's buying off the plan. So buying off the plan, you would be putting down a deposit 10% for the land and 5% of the house, the build value. Correct. All right, that's good enough. Um, okay, then same, same customer asked this other question, what are the benefits of buying off the plan? What are the pros and cons? The positives and negatives of buying off the plan yeah if you're looking at the benefits uh one is if you say for example you want to go with 80 percent finance you don't have that 80 percent right now but you have 10 percent where you can lock something in right now with the 10 percent deposit you have and then you have sufficient time to collect your remaining 10 percent so that's one of the benefits uh another benefit to is uh it allows them time to organize their funds, uh, meaning they might be not ready with the finance, but as long as they have a pre-approval, they can even reduce their funding and put more capital. They have time to get the funding right. Uh, so those are the main benefits of buying off the plan. Okay. Can I add to that now? So when sure. someone buys off the plan, like for instance, what we have seen in the last couple of months or the last year or so, if they were to lock in a contract today for completion in 24 months, they're locking in prices today, whereas the increment of prices wouldn't, wouldn't affect their purchase in 24 months, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. So you're buying a future today, signing it for the past price, but settlement might be in 2023 or 2024 for that matter. Correct, and you're buying today's prices where by the time a settlement comes, your value of the property has gone up where yes. you got it. Yeah, I've seen that in many, many, many instances when the property comes up for settlement, the value, the valuations exceed the price it was tra transacted at. Definitely. Okay, any cons in buying off the plan? Uh, yeah, it takes time. Uh, if you want a rental return straight away, uh, that's not going to work because you have to wait for another six months, one year or 24 months until the project is finished. Uh, so your rental return, if you want it straight away, it's not going to work. And uh, another con would be, uh, I mean, valuations typically will stack up because uh, of the time factor, as we discussed before. But something like COVID or something like a disaster has happened, if the valuation falls down, then uh, it might not stack up at the current value. So I think, yeah, those are the cons. So there is a minute risk factor, but it's more pros than cons, of course. Correct, correct. All right. Um, okay, another question that another client just asked, what do you mean by the term dutable value? How does it affect a house and land purchase of the plan? 
Yeah, so dutiable value in, in a house and land scenario, it's quite straightforward because uh, you pay stamp duty only. Dutiable value is where you pay the stamp duty on. Uh, you pay only on the land value. Uh, mostly the duty bill value comes into play in apartments or townhouses where they buy off the plan. You pay a stamp duty on the duty bill value specified on the contract. So this does pertain to the date the contract was signed, correct? Correct. Correct. So if there was again this in detail, the, so if there was nothing built or nothing, no no expense made on that. Uh, pro, uh, pro, property space yeah there is no duty that applies there except the land value correct okay uh, does this dutiable value change and if so when does it when does that happen i suppose we just answered that but please elaborate now yeah i mean once the once the dutiable value is set on the contract that cannot change um so based on the day you sign the contract, a dutiable value will be set and that will not change. Okay. That would be enough. I mean, just one more thing I'd like to add then, I mean, so you probably can correct me, but if it's an apartment and they're going into the basement, you know, a couple of levels into the basement, dutiable value is not does not change when they go down, right? It's above the ground level that dutiable value is pertinent. Correct. So they are, and if they have not come up beyond ground level, it's still zero value, land value at least, no building yeah. value there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So presently, when an investor was to buy off the plan, does he pay dutiable value or does he pay full stamp duty or how does that work? Yeah, it depends on the project. It depends on the state. Uh, depends on the uh, state really uh, some states you have to pay the full value uh, whereas some of the other states it's based on the progress of the project so if it's just before take off taking off off the ground uh, you might pay a very less value and it goes up but uh, if it's close to completion it'll be much higher whereas in some of the states regardless of the situation you have to pay the full value okay. uh, this is another uh, question that the customer asked us today, and I mean, the customer we were discussing a while ago, uh, his message saying, what, uh, sorry, when I pay the 10% deposit for, for a property that will be completed next year, does the, does the vendor receive those funds or where do those funds go? No, vendor does not receive any funds. Uh, when you pay a 10% deposit, typically it goes into a lawyer's trust account or a escrow account which nobody can touch. So as a developer, you cannot touch the funds until the settlement happens. Uh, example, if there, it's an apartment project, uh, settlement is in two years time in 2023, as the window of the project, they are gonna get their funds only in 2023 when the settlements happen of the apartments or townhouses. Uh, the 10% cannot be used. It has to sit on the trust account of the lawyer. Okay. Uh, another question. When once I enter a contract of the plan, can I pull out or can I yeah, can I pull out of, of the of the contract before the property is complete? Now, there's only probably two ways you can pull out of a contract. One is the cooling off period. It can be three days or five days based on the state. Mm -hmm. uh, during the cooling off period, tip, uh, you can uh, pull out. But uh, after that, unless you have a subject to finance clause uh, or subject to FIRB approval, and based on those situations, if your finance is not approved or FIRB approval is not granted, you can pull out because of that reason. But beyond that, uh, you cannot simply pull out of a contract. Okay. Um, okay, another very somewhat of a basic question between if I was to buy off the plan and I lose my job, would I be able to get a loan? I know that's a very, very standard question. We know the answer to that, but now we know that you explain. Yeah, that's a fair question. I mean, it's all possible. Uh, if it's an apartment or townhouse, uh, you have paid the 10% to sign the contracts uh, in the middle of the game, you lose the job and you cannot get finance anymore. If that is the case, uh, unfortunately, you cannot pull out of the contract. Uh, 
Worst case scenario would be your 10% can be forfeited as per the contract. The only way to get out of that situation is to find a buyer where you can nominate um, to another person so that you can get your deposit back and the new person can continue with the contract. And that's the only way out. Okay. Uh, secondly, okay, I have another question. This is from Gavin. Uh, what is the process of investing in rental properties? I know, I think I can use my equity. Yes, you can. Yeah, so one, uh, when you're going into investments, uh, there's three ways you can do it, right? One is you should have some savings where you can put that as a deposit and go for investment property. Number two is you might have some equity on your own home or your other investment properties if you do have. You can use the equity of the property as a deposit to your next investment property. And number three is if you have sufficient amount of money in your superannuation, you can use the superannuation funds as a deposit using an SMSF or self-managed super fund investment. So those are the three ways you can use to fund your next investment property. Okay. So firstly is savings. Secondly is equity on your own home. And yep. third is possibly your superannuation fund that you can purchase a rental property. Correct. Can you combine, another question coming in from the same chat, can you combine savings with the equity in your home? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, say for example, you might have 50,000 of savings, you might be able to get about 100,000 from your equity from your one of your investment properties or your own home. You can combine the two and put that as a deposit towards your next investment. Here, yeah, yet another question on that note. The equity is measured by the bank, is it? Uh, yes, so equity will be decided by the bank based on the valuation. So you might value the property at say 700,000, but if the bank values it at 650, that's the value they're gonna take for calculating your equity. Okay. So in summary, equity would be how much I owe the bank against how much it's worth and they would let me access some money from that for yet another purpose. Yeah, you get 80%. Uh, 80% meaning? Yeah. So say for example, you uh, your property is worth 650,000 mm -hmm. and uh, you owe the bank 400,000. You take 80% of 650, Mm -hmm. let's say it's 550 mm -hmm. minus what you owe the bank so okay. you might be able to take about 100,000 in that instance okay okay, okay. that's that's see, there are more messages coming in I mean okay here's another person um this is Kevin Kevin asks superannuation how do I create how do I sorry how do I create a property investment with superannuation? I think that's a far-fetched question. We'll have to go into much detail. Yeah, uh, we can briefly touch upon that. Uh, but as you said, we'll, we'll have to get a SMSF or superannuation expert delve into the details of it. But uh, you can create a self-managed super fund where you're managing your super fund, own your super fund. And let's say, for example, you have about 150,000 in your super fund. You can use that as your deposit and then go for a property and then rather than keeping in the super fund uh, on your super account you can use that and put it into a property as your deposit and that has to be structured through a smsf uh, financial planner uh, and that that super fund can be used as a deposit for your property okay that's all the questions I have. That's, we have a, for that's now. a whole new subject altogether, but that's a really good way of investing because there's a lot of tax benefits using that. There are more questions coming in, Navin. I don't know whether we have time enough. Can Let's you... take a couple of more. Okay. Uh, this other question just came in on Facebook. Uh, is, is buying property in SMSF legal? <laughs> I, I would think it certainly is. I see it happening a lot. Yeah, no, of course it is. 
of course it is legal it's just that you have to have the required funds i mean if you are having only fifty thousand dollars in your super it cannot be done because uh, you can borrow only 70 percent using your smsf so you have to have a 30 percent deposit on your super so you should have a combined i mean ideally you should have about two hundred thousand. uh but if you're having 130 140 150 based on the property you're looking at uh, along with the financial planner we can work it out but it's certainly like legal okay good then there's another question coming from another person interested in super can superannuation buy properties of the plan yeah you can uh, the rule with smsf investment is has to be a single contract property which means uh, it can be it cannot be a house and land it can it has to be either established home off the plan apartment townhouse with a single contract or a house with a single contract off the plan okay. more questions coming in now in and okay how can i forfeit lenders mortgage insurance asked by janaka uh, yeah the only way to do that is you have to uh, borrow only 80 percent or less if you are borrowing over 80 percent you have to pay the lenders mortgage insurance or lmi okay so it has to be a 20 percent deposit and 80 percent ratio from the bank yeah correct yeah okay there are still more questions coming in now in yes uh bigumal is typing i can see okay and okay neg about okay he's asking about negative gearing completely off topic here but uh, we get that this question uh, negative gearing uh is okay here he goes okay does negative gearing mean the property has to make more loss than profit on its own or does it does it involve the owner's income no it doesn't involve the owner's income but uh, that's exactly right so if the property is making a loss from the rental income so your mortgage is higher than your rental income that's your your property is negatively geared if your rental income is higher than your mortgage then it is positively geared so i mean uh, in a portfolio you should you need to have both uh, you need to, you need to have cash flow positive properties with some positive gearing as well as negative geared properties where it it will give you a lot of uh, capital appreciation typically this kevin is coming back with another one about smsf if i was to invest in a property would that forfeit my borrowing no it doesn't SMSF is a whole new uh, concept where it does not have impact on your borrowing. You use your super as a deposit and then the bank and the financial planner will work it out and set up that for you and you can buy the property using that as your contribution. Okay. That's about all I see for now. Wonderful questions. Wonderful. And this, this was more people looking at off the plan and SMSF interesting sms with what i see here at least we got a couple of people we can discuss that with and of course the license smsf advisor will talk to anyone who's interested yeah definitely send us a message if you want to have a detailed discussion and then we can get our smsf expert involved and uh, get that all clarified for you all right that's about all i mean for today i think we should call it yeah. a day yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we should call it a day. One last one. Um, what would you recommend, SMSF or using the equity? I recommend doing both. You should, once you have enough funds in SMSF, you should definitely use that for at least one property. That way, your super fund will grow in value by the time it, you retire and uh, you don't you don't pay capital gains tax when you save that property after retirement 
So that's a huge advantage in terms of taxes. At the same time, you should also use your equity of your home and buy your investment property. Investment property is not something you just buy one and say that I have investment property. That's not going to get you financial freedom or make you rich. You need to have a portfolio and you need to structure it accordingly to have that portfolio in place. So use your super, use the equity, use your savings. And uh, that's how you can create wealth using a portfolio. All right, I think it's about time. Yep, sounds like it, Navin. Excellent. Some good questions. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Janaga. Thank you, Kevin. Very Any very more questions, question. please feel to message us. We can like we'll address it. We will address them in person and also we'll disc we can discuss these on Ask Grit the next time. Of course. Uh, feel free to send in your questions. We are going to discuss all the questions we get every week, every Thursday. Please, please feel free to send your questions away and uh, we are more than happy to assist you. One more question coming in from Kevin, <laughs> last minute. Does depreciation and negative gearing work in self-managed super fund investments? One for the road. <laughs> yes, it does. It does? Yeah. So, okay, I'll, I'll just say, I can. In, in my knowledge, the way I've seen it, depreciation and negative gearing works in a self-managed super fund entity. That's the rest of it. We got to ask a license advisor. That's right. All right. Thank All you right. so much for listening and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week for yet another Ask Grit session.